so much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is the Mr. Media Interview, recorded live on blogtalkradio.com on April 18th, 2008. Uh, before we turn to my guest, Jeff Chrysler, let's look at some of today's top news from my Wall Street Journal. The Statue of Liberty will be sold to the Saudis for an undisclosed sum, the White House said. Nearly three years later, Katrina victims are still bitching. Obama to buy Yahoo outbidding Microsoft. Spokesman says, we have so much money, we don't know what to do with it. Al-Qaeda target of hostile takeover. The bid is said to be from a little-known Saudi hedge fund. That's probably pronounced hedge fund, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Anyway, joining me today is an executive editor of the Wall Street, of my Wall Street Journal, which he will insist is a parody, but seems true enough to me. Jeff Chrysler's name may not be familiar to you, uh, but if you're a fan of comedy, you've certainly seen or heard his work. He writes for Comedy Central's Indecision 2008 uh, website, I believe, has a syndicated business humor column and video, Funny Money, via Jim Cramer's TheStreet.com, is author of the forthcoming book, Get Rich Cheating, and has joined the staff and cast of a new show from the creator of The Daily Show. You can get a taste of what we're talking about, by the way, at www.wsjparody.com. Jeff Chrysler, welcome to Mr. Media. Thanks. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Appreciate your time. Um, how's it going so far with uh, My Wall Street Journal? It's going great. Uh, you know, it's been got a lot of buzz, as you probably saw on page three, is a little dot pixel image of Miss Ann Coulter in all of her bare glory, which has gotten quite a lot of attention on the the interwebs, the internet. Um, it's been a uh, it's been a hit. You know, no one does anything in print anymore, and we're uh, we're bringing it back to the good old days, I guess. But not something in print. <laughs> um, and, you know, uh, Tony Hendra is the real, the man behind this, and uh, he put together a team that I feel very fortunate to be part of. And, you know, as you flip through this, and it's available at Hudson News and on Amazon.com, uh, I, I am, I'm, every inch is, is funny. Um, you know, there's just some brilliant people that contributed, um, and I think everyone's been really receptive to that. It, I mean, it really is quite an amazing group. Uh, obviously, Tony Hendra, uh, uh, Andy Borowitz is involved here. Um, uh, let me look. I'm looking over here. Terry Jones, Mike Python, uh, yourself, obviously. Uh, Joe Keenan, Ellis Weiner. Um, how did you get involved? Uh, I got involved because a friend of mine, uh, Rob Kuttner, who is a writer at The Daily Show, uh, heard about this project, and he passed along my name. As you mentioned in the intro, I have been writing a business humor column for about two and a half years called Funny Money, and, you know, there's really no one doing business humor, at least not intentionally. Um, and he passed along my name, and I also have been working on a book called Get Rich Cheating about corporate crime and other cheating, and it was kind of a natural fit. And I met Tony, and uh, we really hit it off and I think shared a, a bit of a vision. And um, tell us how to identify some of your work in this, uh, in this issue. Uh, well, there are two articles that I specifically wrote. One is uh, the next bubble, bubble, bubble on page seven, um, which is you know takes the idea of the the, uh, the technology bubble and the real estate bubble into the next logical conclusion, which is that uh, we would invest in things called GUMs or gums <laughs> and blow up as bubbles. Um, <laughs> okay, I get it. <laughs> It takes a little, I like, my humor is kind of creep, I, I like to think. It takes a few days, sometimes as a matter of 34 years for everyone to get the joke. <laughs> um, and then I also did a section in the back uh, about, uh, what do we call it, about like gadgets for wealthy people, it's hot new toys. Hmm. Um, and then I, you know, I helped brush up a lot of the other stuff. You know, I, Tony and the, the designer named uh, Milan spent a lot of hours in the last couple of weeks making this all come together, and I would come by the office and, you know, did everything from kind of write some of these bylines like Dylan Fadigan and Keith Doberman, to, uh, which are so simple and silly, but I had a lot of pleasure just thinking about them. Um, to stuff like the captions in the, in the different pictures and helping with some headlines and 
Um, I think my favorite headline that I kind of helped them craft last minute was limping all the way to the bank about Heather Mills. Um, <laughs> oh, that's mean. That's just I, mean. You know what? Comedy is is not supposed to be gentle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've kind of noticed that over time. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> now, uh, uh, Jeff, how old are you? Uh, as a member of the entertainment industry, I can play anywhere from 25 to 35. Okay. Um, or how's that for a public answer? Oh, that's fine. But uh, what, what I was going to ask is, you were, I was guessing you were kind of young when the uh, uh, Off the Wall Street Journal came out. I was. Uh, I did not know about it until Tony showed it to me. I was, I think that was in like 83, so I was uh, negative four at the time. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, he showed that to me, you know, when, when we first kind of met, um, he basically he laid out the New York Post, the Wall Street Journal, and then the Off the Wall Street Journal and said, we're making all these come together. And uh, I like to think we did a pretty good job of that. Uh, yeah, I, but I, I have to ask, I mean, what exactly do you guys have against poor old Rupert Murdoch? Nothing. In fact, uh, apparently out in California, one of his representatives was buying all these off the newsstands uh, in order to get them out of the public can. I think that's great. I'm very happy that he does that because we'll just print some more and you can buy more. Um, kind of like the, the Doritos line, isn't it? <laughs> Go ahead. Buy as many as you want. We'll, we'll, we'll make more. Exactly. Um, I don't think, you know, we have anything specific against Rupert Murdoch. I think he just symbolizes and personifies, um, you know, the consolidation of media and um, what's happened to media in this country and its role as an informer of the people and an informer of the government of the people. Um, and, you know, I, I think I would be preaching to the choir to say that the mainstream media is not doing its job and the idea that um, one of the well-respected newspapers, whether or not you agreed with the editorial slant, the Wall Street Journal has been very well-respected for journalistic integrity, is now falling under the umbrella of, you know, the Post and the London Sun, I think it is, he yeah, has, you know, his whole conglomerate of Fox News. Um, you know, I mean, I think that we need to look no farther than, I think there was a report that came out today or yesterday that said that, uh, you know, we're no, basically we're no safer against terrorist attacks, and I'm sure that will get no coverage in the mainstream media because it's not, you know, Barack Obama calling someone bitter. Um, and, you know, I, I realize that what I'm saying is kind of biting off a big, piece of the world to chew at, but, you know, with the business environment as it is kind of falling apart and the media environment similarly, it's a, you know, this is an attempt to kind of address both ills, both the, you know, kind of rampant uh, capitalism and um, the conglomeration and the responsibility of media. Well, you know, it's it's funny, but, I, well, it's funny, of course it's funny, we're, we're talking about humor here, but uh, it seems like the, uh, you, just on page three, you guys take uh, what could happen to the Wall Street Journal to its most logical Rupert Murdoch extreme by having Ann Coulter, uh, you know, in uh, basically a little G-string and nothing more. Right. Uh, I mean, that's, you know, I, I don't know. I, I could see that it could go that way. I'm still amazed the New York Post hasn't gone that way. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, one of the things that, that we tried to do, and this was really Tony's, I think, one of his more brilliant visions of this was, you know, with the exception of page three being a leap, if you start at the front, the, the style and the articles and the type of, of articles are very like what the Wall Street Journal is. Then as you progress throughout this 20-page this, this paper, it becomes more and more the New York Post. And I think that that's a, you know, a statement about what we think will happen to um, you know, the Wall Street Journal as it becomes more fully integrated into Rupert Murdoch's deal. Well, and of course, it, of course it, it's... Uh it's presented not as a broadsheet, but as a tabloid, which, you know, there's just a little hint right there, I think, right. of where it's all going. Um, let, me, uh, uh, let me give out our number in case anyone would like to call and uh, ask you a question directly. Um, uh, if you're listening live today, April 18th, uh, the number to call is 646-595-3135. Um, were you surprised uh, by the amount of attention that this has gotten? I, I, I was actually around uh, and, uh, when Off the Wall Street Journal came out, and I know it got some attention, but I don't think it got this, this kind of attention. Um, I'm not that surprised. I, I think initially I was 
because I was actually in Chicago working in a comedy club there this weekend, and I came home Monday to find out that there had been, you know, something like a, a some thousand numbers of hits on a Huffington Post blog about it. And so initially I was like, wow. But then thinking about it, you know, it's it's a common thread that's, I think, going through a lot of people's mind about the fault of the media. And, um, you know, you look at the success of a show like The Colbert Report uh, or The Daily Show, um, and, you know, people are hungry for satire in a way, kind of satire sometimes provides, you know, the source of information that the mainstream media isn't providing. Um, and again, because this is a print thing, it's kind of unique because it's a, an attack on um, the Wall Street Journal and business, it's unique. And I think that, you know, because it's so well done, if I can say so myself, and, you know, I only contribute a small portion of the well doneness, um, because these people involved are so brilliant, um, it makes what it's attempting to do successful. And I think people really identify with that. Um, so, you know, besides my initial, like, oh, yeah, I, I was part of this great thing, um, I'm not too surprised. I mean, it's, you know, it's well done. There's nothing like it. And I think that it reflects a lot of feelings that people have um, right now, both about kind of the, the, the robber barons and the, the elitism of business and about media and its uh, irresponsibility. Was there anything that you guys uh, – thought was, was off limits or, or any jokes that were you just decided to cut at the last minute because it was just too too mean? Um, I don't think so and you know I, I wasn't in with every decision. Um, I know that uh, you know talking about this whole Ann Coulter thing was a discussion and as it turns out it's probably the one thing that has gotten us the most attention to have kind of a fake picture of her half naked. Um, but, you know, all, all these things in here, there, there's some stuff that's pretty, you know, harsh, but harsh in the sense that it's almost true. Um, and I think that that was our, the, our idea to make this, you know, I hate to use the word edgy, but make this a very edgy, cutting piece. I mean, like, there's this article, he this editorial here, which I actually don't know who wrote this, but it's called The Wellstone Option. Um, it's, you know, a satirical take, you know, Heaven forbid uh, we have an African American you know, president, and heaven forbid someone were to you know, do X Y Z to a small plane, and it's it's shocking, um, but yet you know that there, in some way, you have a sense that there really is a strain of people that have this line of thought. So, you know, while we certainly don't agree with anything in there, you know, it's something that you know fits the paper that we try to produce. Hmm. Well, Jeff, uh, I mentioned a couple of things that you've been involved with uh, besides this. Uh, give us a little snapshot of your career at this point. Uh, obviously, you were doing stand-up, and I, I didn't even mention that. You know, what, what are you involved in uh, you know, this week, for example? Um, well, my career is at a point where I am in desperate need of a time machine to travel three years into the future and find out what projects panned out so I could track <laughs> the others. Um, I am involved, uh, you know, in a great project every Monday here in New York City called Shoot Messenger. Um, you mentioned that, I think, in the intro. It's from uh, Liz Winstead, who's a creator of The Daily Show. Um, and it's another thing, like working with Tony and all these people, that, you know, I feel very fortunate to work with people that are very experienced and successful. Um, it's a kind of, it's a fake, it's two shows in one. It's a fake morning news show and kind of a spoof on that. And then it's also an interview. Um, so that's something that a bunch of the group of us do. Uh, every week. Um, I have stand-up going on. I have my own tour called Comedy Against Evil, which is a political comedy tour. I take it to colleges, and uh, I'll actually be in a college in Michigan next week, and uh, the weekend of the 25th and 6th, I'll be in San Francisco. Um, I work on some other business comedy-related stuff. Uh, I know I'm forgetting. Oh, I'm working on this book called Get Rich Cheating. I actually just met with my publisher today. Um, I'm sure there's more. One of my oh, uh, I'm going. I was just the Glasgow International Comedy Festival a few weeks ago. I'm going to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in August with two shows, and I'm uh, one is my stand-up, and one is a kind of original sketch comedy show that I'm writing with a couple talented women, uh, Anne Shell and Anna Moore. Hmm. Um, I know. Oh, I also I'm blogging for Indecision 2008 uh, for 236, and I just uh, got hooked up with CNN has a new political comedy blog called Capital Punishment. Um, I am actively avoiding sleep. <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't sound like you're lacking for things to do at the moment. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, mean I think you, it's not from first-hand knowledge and certainly from just talking to people. This is entertainment and industry that, uh, you know, you can make it big, but you can't make a living, they say, or 
you know, when you have work, you just you just go with it. Um, and like I said, I wish I knew which would pan out. I mean, everything. My my problem right now is a problem that I'm very blessed to have, which is that I have too many creative projects. Um, I wish some of them paid ten times what they do, but uh, I, I feel very fortunate um, to be in the position that I am. And you know, it's it's a good place to be. I'm I'm still an up and coming type person, but it's, I feel like I'm in a good spot. Yeah, it sounds like you're right in the spot where you got a lot of things going on, and if the right thing breaks, you're uh, you're in good good shape there. Hope so. I uh, there is a a, a a web chat that operates uh, uh, simultaneously with the uh, Mr. Media uh, live interview, and uh, uh, Buddy Love, Buddy Love everybody, Buddy Love is uh, in the web chat, and uh, he just wanted to add that he doesn't care if Ann Coulter has a horse face. He still likes horses. <laughs> well, we did want to not insult anybody that else who has been in a dot matrix picture before. By <laughs> um, she is... It's the presence of, of people like that that make me feel like I am not uh, too loud a radical liberal in any way because the other side has very louder, shriller voices. <laughs> uh do you want to comment on which way your own uh, politics lean, left, right, middle, nowhere um, at all? I am a registered independent, and um, I like to, um, you know, assess everything. I, for better or worse, I tend to have the time to read the paper and think about issues, which I know not every American does, um, and that's not their fault or anything. But uh, given a choice, I think I'm probably a progressive. Um, I occasionally get, will get kind of fired up with some populism. Um, I, I have a very fortunate background. I, I went to my, my parents provided for me, and I went to some good schools. I went to uh, Princeton. I actually went to a law school, and you know I had plenty of opportunities that I know most people don't have. Um, and from that, I've kind of developed a sense of um, populism and share things with people. Um, but I, you know, I certainly waver. I don't think I agree with the, the Democratic Party on everything. In fact, I know I don't. Um, but I think that it's, I'm, I'm pretty clearly a not George Bush Republican. Um, I don't think that's rare anymore. Um, when you're uh, working on one of the many uh, writing gigs that you referred to, uh, is there a uh, particular place you like to be, uh, either in your head or physically, uh, to write? Or, you know, does stuff just come to you and you just keep paper and paper and uh, uh, pencil with you? Or, you know, how, how does that whole process work for you? Um, I wish I knew the trick because I'd be more efficient. Um, I tend to I tend to think that it's it's just a matter of starting. Um, you know, just kind of whether it's on a computer or on a notepad, just getting a few words out, and then for me things kind of flow. You know, I tend to take in a lot of information and let it kind of stew around inside of me, and then. Uh, um, eventually, as a friend of mine put it, I birth a creative project like a three-headed rhinoceros through a tiny hole in my abdomen. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I, like I said, I wish I knew. I wish I could uh, get up every morning and from 8 to 12, right? Um, one of my good friends is Dan Perraro, who does the cartoon Bizarro. And uh, he, you know, he works every morning, and it's great. He's very productive. Um, I haven't yet found that rhythm myself of a specific time, but... Whoever strikes, I do carry around a little recorder, a little notepad, as required by law. So. <laughs> um, are there any? Uh, I was just thinking about all the things that you've, you've worked on, whether it be Indecision uh, 2008 or, or the thing for the street. Uh, any lines uh, that you had to throw away because an editor didn't find them acceptable that you still think are funny that maybe you'd like to uh, share here where, you know, we won't tell anybody? I'm sorry, can you say that again? A fire engine just went by my, my window outside. <laughs> The, the glory of new media. The glory of new media. Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering if uh, you know, in, in the various places that you've been writing for, if there's any lines that uh, you know you've written that you thought were really funny that some some fat-headed editor said, no, no, we can't, we can't use that. You can't run that here. I just wonder if there's any lines you'd like to share with us that you couldn't uh, place anywhere else. Then you know, we won't tell anybody. Right, I understand. Um, I'm sure there are tons. Gosh. Uh, you know, I just had fun last, uh, or was it last week or the week before, with when Hillary compared herself to Rocky. Um, you remember that? She was in yeah. Pennsylvania, and I was thinking about how that is, you know, how daring it was of her to say that in Pennsylvania, the home of Rocky and Philadelphia and everything, and I thought of some other places she could uh, 
this was uh, she could go to kind of pander. I mean, uh, campaign. Um, <laughs> she go to Miami, compare herself to Sonny Crockett from Miami Vice because she's fighting McCain with a charismatic black man who she really doesn't like. <laughs> Um, she could go to Boston and say she's like Will Hunting and Good Will Hunting because she has unappreciated genius and she needs a therapist to tell her it's not her fault. It's not her fault. Um, <laughs> she, uh, oh, she could be in San Francisco. She could be a uh, Catherine Schrammel, which was uh, Sharon Stone's character in Basic Instinct. Mm-hmm. Um, because I do happen to think that Hillary and an ice pick is probably Bill O'Reilly and Matt Drudge's secret fantasy. Um, <laughs> Just like this Ann Coulter picture, I'm sure a lot of left leaners actually really enjoy. Um, and uh, then, of course, she could go to Vice City and be one of the hookers from Grand Theft Auto because she'll do anything to win. And I do mean anything. <laughs> I like that. Now, don't you feel better having gotten that, you know, out there? Um, this was something I do. I just uh, decided it was something that I kind of pitched to, um, to Comedy Central and to... Uh, another blog, I'm forgetting which one, to run. Um, but sometimes as a matter of the timeliness, uh, I didn't really come to me until like three or four days till this story had gone off the cycle. Um, you know, I probably thought of it when it was hot and eight, but then to take the time to find a place to sit down and write it. Um, and so, it's, you know, they, they go through stuff so much that they just felt like it was the time had passed. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, I'm sure they thought it was just genius. <laughs> I'm sure they did. Kind of like uh, the timing of Randy Rhodes calling uh, Hillary uh, a whore. I thought that was uh, there's great comedy in that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Uh, um, no, no. I think yours was much funnier. Don't. Uh, maybe I didn't. You know, it's all on how how you execute the joke. And I think I just fell flat on my face right there. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just not. I'm just not as good a host as you are. You're a very welcoming host. That that makes me feel funny, and I appreciate that. And I. I can't turn it around your way. Trust me, everything you said, hilarious. <laughs> and you're a very gracious, very gracious guest. I appreciate that. Can I have a dollar? Okay. Uh, <laughs> are, there, are, are there any plans? Now, it took, it took uh, Hendra, and uh, I guess David Bloom was uh, involved in this 25 years ago as well. It took them 25 years to, to do another, uh, another parody of the journal. Uh, will this group get together and do anything uh, together? Will, will, will you guys do something again, anytime sooner than 25 years? Well, I mean, I, I think that right now, this WallStreetJournal.com, available at Hudson News and Amazon.com, um, is, a, <laughs> thank you, uh, is its own project. It's a one-time thing that we hope will sell well. But I think we're also, you know, open and conscious to the possibility that if it is well-received, as it has been so far, that um, we may do something else with it, uh, you know, Web presence is probably the the path of least resistance. Um, you know, it's a different kind of. You don't sell it for three ninety five. You just hope people come and click on advertising. Um, I know that to make this print run was a lot of work, and I know, you know, people, you know, in essence, volunteered or got paid very little just to be part of it. I mean, some of these, you know, advertisements in here are from people at real advertising agencies who just volunteered to do it. Um, you know, we've got people that are insiders in different industries that, that contributed. So I know this effort was a lot of people were willing to contribute, but I don't know, you know, that it could be pulled off again frequently. Um, and Jeff, no. Jeff, I, got, yeah. I have to interrupt. Are you saying that the double truck ad for Bear Stearns, that's not a real ad? Uh, that is not a real ad, no. But, however, you may, those of you that have this copy, and listeners are going to have to go buy it to see, the Bear Stearns is actually, that's me modeling. Um, but what's ironic is that's not my backside. It's actually in my ear. I don't know how that uh <laughs> Well, I was impressed because it appealed to me. I mean, because I, I wear that, that. That's the G-string that I wear. Oh, yeah. We actually, yeah. I don't know if you, you might have noticed that it's missing from your drawer at home. Uh, yeah, no, you missed it. Yeah. Um, in other words, I, don't, I, I think we're open to any kind of possibility. You know, I mean, it's the, the way that... Um, as, as you know, the way that media and entertainment is changing seemingly every month, who knows where the um, next outlet and avenue will be. Um, but, you know, I'm certainly personally not going to stop, you know, doing this type of work, and I don't think anybody else will that's involved now that they've seen the reaction we've gotten. Very good. 
Well, uh, Jeff, I, I want to point out uh, people can uh, find out what's happening with you at, uh, at your blog and website. It is uh, www.jeff.chrysler. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Yep. Like the car, but spelled different. All right. K, and so it's K-R-E-I-S, as in Sam, L-E-R, dot com, slash, blog, slash. And I also know if you go to jeffchrysler.com, there's a link there for the blog. So, uh, and, and uh, let's also also tell people that they can uh, 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 find my Wall Street Journal on newsstands. You can also order it from the Mr. Media site, and uh, there's a website for it. It is wsjparody.com. Huh? All right. Well, Jeff, uh, it was uh, it was fun to fun to talk to you. I hope maybe you think about coming back and uh, joining us again for another pro- when we have another project going. Absolutely. Hopefully, uh, I've got this book coming out and. Uh some number of months, and we will uh, we'll talk again. If not before that, we'll talk then. That would be great. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you for having me. It was great, and I really enjoy your program. Take care, Jeff. Thanks right. a lot. Bye. Bye bye. So again, uh, if you want to check out Jeff's uh, website, jeffchrysler.com/blog, and again, his last name is spelled K R E I S L E R. Now for dozens more celebrity and media newsmaker interviews, surf over to our, our main site, www.mrmedia.com, where you can listen to my earlier conversations with Billy Bob Thornton, Cheryl Hines, Milo Ventimiglia, David Fury, Anna Gunn, Bill Prady, Stephen Pastis, and many, many others. You can also read full transcriptions of many of those interviews at the site. And please think about writing an online review of Mr. Media or marking Mr. Media as one of your favorites whether you listen on Blog Talk Radio, Blueberry, Zencast, Odeo, or iTunes. Folks, thanks so much for giving us a piece of your day. Come back again and check us out real soon. Bye-bye.